Okay. Hey, everyone. So this talk is going to be nothing like last year's because I honestly didn't prepare at all. And I think I wrote this on the plane ride here. So if you're expecting really cool stuff, I'm going to let you down. So, um, <laughs> so, ah, oh, shucks, I don't deserve it. But yeah, so in 2009, I proved to the world that ZBLL is possible, because before that, it wasn't possible. And I predicted that in the future, people are going to use ZBLL and solve last layer in one step and whatever, whatever. And in, you see people, there's like seven people who use ZBLL now. In the past year, Anthony Brooks knows all of it. Uh, other people know all of it. Callum Hales Jep. Uh, Jabari knows even more last layer than he did last year. People are learning all these algs. They know so many algs. And people do last layer in one step, and it, it's easy these days. So the, pre the future I predicted has come. We are in the future now. So what we need to do is go into the future beyond the future. We need to do LL skips every time. Yes. Yeah. So uh, my talk today is going to be about my new method, uh, ZZCT. And um, I'm going to do a brief intro. And then I'm going to tell you the cube science on how it works, why there are so few cases. And then I'm going to tell you about the statistics. And the statistics are where it's really, really good at. And then I'm going to finish off with some concluding statements and specifics. And I'll, I'll throw in a few inspirational stuff here and there. So let's get started. Um, this year, actually, I started my PhD in organic synthesis. And I had like no time to do cube stuff. And I ran into this problem with ZBLL. It's something called optimization. So uh, I'm going to use an example so that you know what I'm talking about. OLL is a 56 algorithm set that was invented in the 80s. It's been like, what, 30 years, 36 years? And it's still not optimized. If, uh, I don't know if Jaden McNeil is here, but this year he found a new dot OLL case that was like way better than the old case. And it's been 30 years, everyone's looking through these cases and we're still finding new, better cases. OLL is 56 cases, ZBLL is 490 something cases. We're not going to optimize it anytime soon. And currently, every week, people would post new algs, and I had to learn these new algs. And it's not that simple because you have to forget your old alg, you have to not mix them up, you have to learn all kinds of stuff. And I couldn't keep current while I was in grad school. It was just simply impossible. So I thought to myself, there's got to be a solution. There's got to be a way we can have some method that has all the benefits of ZBLL, even better recognition, similar move counts, and all that good stuff. But we, we got to do it in like, I don't have time. I got to like do it in like, I only practice an hour a day or something. And it's totally possible. Like, who says these things aren't possible? Like, everyone says, oh, all the good methods, they're already discovered. There are no rules. Let's flip everything on its head and like just think outside the box for once. Oh, also, I'll be looking at my iPad because I need cue cards. I didn't memorize this at all. Like I said, I wrote this on the plane ride here. So when I found my method, actually, I had all those benefits plus way more. And that was the statistics aspect. And I'll get into that later. But So let me tell you about the method itself. So once I get to the last slot, um, can someone scramble this? I swear I'm not going to use a prepared scramble. I'm going to get to last slot from ZZ. And usually in last slot, the normal way to do it is you look for an edge and a corner. And you look at the permutation of these pieces, and you ignore orientation. Why? We do that because people told us that was a good way to do it. And we just followed blindly. What if we took that and flipped it on its head? What if we look at orientation? Forget about permutation. Let's not even look at a corner. Only look at one edge. Because it takes time to find two pieces. No, just find one piece. Look at orientation and just put that edge in, in a, using an F2L alg. And the second step is, let's just put the corner in it's a certain way that just solves everything. Easy. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, it's not that easy. 
that's too crazy, it probably has hundreds of algs. That's because you're stuck in the trap of counter-creativity. <laughs> putting the corner in is only 72 algs. And putting the edge in, that's just F2L algs, soons, tricks. All the things you need to know is every single edge slot can be solved with three RUR prime, RU prime, R, those trigger moves. You all know what moves I'm talking about. And three is the upper bound. There's like two cases with four, but you just learn an out for those. So for every case, it's either two or three triggers. And we all, those are easy to memorize. Just trigger one, U prime, trigger B, soon, anti soon, U prime, slot. It's so simple. And all you had to do was think outside the box. Okay, sorry, I, I have to check my cue cards. So, you don't even have to do your last slot in a predetermined order. You just build blocks as the most efficient way and leave one slot open. And the cool thing is, you can adjust the D layer to suit that slot. No rotations. The same theme stays prevalent in ZZ. No rotations whatsoever. You never have to rotate or look to the behind the cube because you can just adjust the D layer to do your algs and put the pieces in, really nice and convenient. And what baffles some people is that some of these cases are really short. You can get seven move last layers, or putting the corner in and solving the last layer. Seven, eight moves. Some of the cases are just the normal F2L algs. And I actually have a theory about this. So uh, PLL solves only six pieces at most. If you look at your algs, n perm moves four pieces, g perm moves six pieces, t perm moves four pieces, e perm moves four. PLL only moves six pieces. The cube is really close to being a solved state. And a few of your PLLs are over 20 moves. They're fast because of ergonomics. A big trap that cubers fall into is move count versus ergonomics. So if we look at another set, such as ZBLL, ZBLL solves eight pieces. And if you notice the average move count of ZBLL, it's lower than PLL. And we start to see a trend here. The more entropy, which is the measure of disorder in a state, it seems that these algs get shorter and shorter. And if you look at OLL and PLL algs, you're breaking up the F2L, putting stuff together, and then putting it back into F2L. Well, why? It goes back to the rules. Why do we have to do that? Why don't we start from the middle, from a really broken up state, put stuff together, and then put it back in? My method has a less move count than ZBLL for the last let step. It's actually two or three more moves, which is inconsequential. But for the last step, it moves nine pieces. Do you see where I'm going with this? I think I have a theory that the more pieces you move, the better the algs are. Why do we have to approach it from such an ordered state when we can approach it from a more disordered state and abuse cube science to get better algs? And I'll talk about that next. So why is it only 72 algs to solve everything? Well, you think to yourself, have you ever used math to find out how many PLLs there are? Corner states, edge states, four corners can be in six states, four edges are 12 states. If you do the math, you actually get 82, 80 something PLLs, but we only use 21 PLLs. Weird, right? So weird. Another example, T set ZBLL is 72 algs, but H set is only 40? That's so weird. It's like the myst mysteries of the cube. The answer is actually pretty simple. It's because of rotational symmetry. I just realized I forgot to give you an example. Where was the scrambled cube? We'll, we'll take a step back. Oh, here it is. So, uh, like I said, this is totally on the fly. I'm running on two, three hours of sleep. So I'm going to give you an example to solve with some uh, walkthrough. And then I'll, I'll talk more about the science and the reasons why rotational symmetry drops cases so low. So the first step in ZZ is to make an EO line. Oh, thank you, sir. So I have all of my edges oriented with respect to white front, green bottom. Michael Humu logo. Um, and now I'm going to get to F2L minus one. And I do that by um, block building. So now I have F2L minus one. 
you see that this is my last slot and this is my top. And the way I recognize this is it looks like an OLL. Um, so I just inserted the edge and oriented the top. And you see how F2L is not solved? I'm going to insert this corner in a way that solves everything. LL skip guaranteed every time. Pretty sick, right? Oh, no. The albs are all online. You can learn this yourself. So um, I'm going to explain rotational symmetry now. So the reason H case is less cases than T case is because if you do a U2, the orientation is the same. And the reason PLL has only 21 algs to solve all those 80-something cases is you can do U and rotate it, and along all four faces, it's the same orientation. So if you abuse this, you can get a lot of cases solved with very few algs. And if you've noticed or you've tried to make methods yourselves, the algorithm count balloons straight up when complexity goes up, and that's because you've broken orientation. If you use a method like ZZ where stuff is practically pre-oriented, it becomes really, really simple. Things become reduced to two gen states. Easy things are easy and fun things are fun. So that was just rotational symmetry. We can actually mirror things along a mirror plane. And if you're using mirrors, half of 72 is 36. With 36 algs, you can put that corner in and solve everything in one step. And did I mention the recognition is just like PLL? It looks like a PLL, so you don't have to learn anything new. So with ZBLL, you have to learn 400 blocks, new methods, recognition methods, all kinds of memory methods, and you have to get it clean and fast. That's so much work. But with this method, if you can OLL PLL, you build on a small skill set that you already know. It's because I was lazy. I was getting tired of spending all these hours because I was so busy in school. Well, I created a method where I didn't have to spend all that time. And now you can too with my method. <laughs> but let's go back to that 36 number. 36 is getting into the realm of easy. If you know PLL, it goes even lower. So if you ever see a one by one by three conjugate, one by one by one by one by three block with a corner on the top, it's a one move PLL conjugate. And the cool thing is that one move can actually cancel at the end. And these conjugates are actually really simple. Uh, there's a there's a J perm that starts with uh, R prime. What if you started it with R? Oh my God! It becomes something that inserts that corner and solves everything. I'm serious, that's one of my algs. But what if you did G perm with an R prime instead of R and vice versa? Well, now you know two more cases. R perm with an L2, two more cases. 10% of the cases are just simple one move PLLs and sometimes these PLLs cancel at the end. So they're the same amount of moves as PLL. And it gets even crazier. Remember how I said some of these are seven and eight movers and some of these are F2L algs? 30% of these are just the normal two gen F2L alg. So you realistically, you're, the, le the learning curve is so gradual, you could just use like a handful of algs and you can use this method. It's that simple. So now that I talked about how rotational symmetry reduces these cases, I'm going to tell you about statistics. And that's where this really, really shines. 30 33% of these algs are 2 33% of the time, you get a pure 2-gen solution. In ZZ with ZBLL, that's 15%. In CFOP, that's like 1.5%. And we all know 2-gen is really nice. Like, you know, all know the algs. Soon, super soon, H perm, U perm. Oh, not super soon. Uh, uh, double soon, anti soon, all those, all those things get mixed up. Two gen algs are nice. And having two gen complete solution 33% of the time, that's pretty nice. There's also a 20% chance that you're going to skip OLL and your last layer is just PLL, which sounds really nice. 
because we all know PLL. And the reason this works is because of corner states. There are only five places that a corner can be. And if you're just inserting the edge, what is the chance that one of those corners is going to be in the correct place? One out of five. So that's 20%. So out of that 20%, it's a one out of 72 chance that after you put that edge in, the whole cube is solved. That means to translate that, to get a completely solved cube after putting the edge in, it's one out of 360 solves that you're going to get a solution that's like in the 30 move uh, region. I'll answer questions last. Um, and if you have like eight TPS, you can see how ridiculous that gets. And if you've looked at the records these days, those are pretty fast times. You're going to need luck to beat those. So why wouldn't you want to use a method that has luck on your side? Let's compare that one out of 360 to straight up ZB. Straight up ZB has a one out of like 2,000 chance of getting a Z LL skip. And uh, I got this wrong in my last seminar. Last seminar I said one out of 12,000. It's actually one out of 15,500 is the chance of getting an LL skip with CFOP. So you can see where getting an LL skip, these are magnitude, orders of magnitude of difference of getting like straight up inserting the edge, 30 something, 35, 40 move solutions. Mo like one out, of, one out of 360 is like once per year, like in a competition. So we can push that even further. Just by learning 50 or 60 more cases, you can push that chance of one out of five having the corner in the right place to one out of three. And you're looking at one out of every 200 solves being a straight up pure LL skip after inserting the edge. The cube is completely solved. And I think that having this luck and having the chance for really, really sick single times is worth, this, worth the effort because using a method that doesn't have luck on your side, it's going to be tough to beat the, any single. Oh, and uh, that's pretty much it. So to summarize, this method is good because of the probability to get pure two-gen solutions, low move count, six singles, the incredible order of magnitude increase for LL skips, and uh, easy recognition. Like I said, all you need to know is look for that one edge, know how to look for a shape like OLL, and then looking at blocks like PLL. And uh, my last words are, never fall into the trap of complacency and counter-creativity. Don't limit yourself to these arbitrary rules that people tell you, and that speed cubing is way more than cubes. It's not about the times. And we're here because that feeling of absolute elation when we improve ourselves, that pursuit of perfection is what drives us. And because honestly, we aren't competing against other people in speed cubing. We're competing against our own times. So big shouts out to Blake Thompson who helped make my method. He made the algs for like 15% or like 20% of my algs. And uh, thank you everyone for coming to US Nationals. The staff, we work hard for this. We want you to have a great time. And that's it. <laughs>